fifth graders. I hope that you're doing well and I hope that you had a really great spring break and hopefully the weather warmed up a little bit for you to go outside and have some fun, enjoy um, some of the outdoors and such. We did lots of fun stuff here, including our Easter egg hunt and looking for baskets and all that good stuff. But I can definitely say I'm really missing you guys. So I really hope that you're doing well. Um, this week, I want to talk about colonial America. When I'm talking colonial, that's a big, big fancy word. We're talking about colonists, okay? Colonists were all the people that came over from Europe to see the new land, okay? So you can see here, this is, it's kind of pixelized, but um, this is a good picture of kind of what it might have looked like as they were, as they were coming along the shores um, in, in early America. So I thought, okay, we just talked about Native American music right before spring break. Let's see what kind of music the colonists brought with them. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to move myself over here. Ooh. All right, there we go. So the first colonists um, came to the new land in the 1600s because of many different reasons, okay? You have to realize that um, when I'm talking about Europe, we're talking about countries like Spain and France and New England or um, or Brit the British, okay? Um, and so many more other countries, okay? So people were coming over out of curiosity because there was a little bit of um, worry that there wasn't another land. And remember, I'm not sure if Mrs. Rusha shared this with you, but they also, one of their main reasons to come over to the new land um, was originally because they were looking for a faster route on the sea to do trading with other countries in like China, okay, or the Asian countries as we would call them. And in the process of looking for a faster route, they ran into the United States or the new land, right? So they came because of curiosity. Once it was found, that is, um, they came because they thought it was a newfound freedom, meaning they could get away from all the politics of their countries, all the kings, um, and queens that they might have been ruled under okay and another big reason um that they came over was because of something called religious persecution now big fancy word for saying they were told what religion they were supposed to believe in this really primarily happened in england okay the king of england at that time was like you must be the religion that i say which was catholic and you must follow all of the rules that are made by myself and the church and if you don't like it well tough turkey toenails right there's a mrs teague saying for you that you missed right so anyways um they basically said, we don't like that. We're going to go check out this new world so we can maybe have our own say and landed over in what is New Eng the New England area. So like Pennsylvania, Maine, all of those states over on that, that coast. And this is where we get a whole bunch of different religions like the Puritans and the Shakers and the Quakers who were very very strict, um, actually to the point where some of them didn't even have music. Um, other people, though, that did come um, were still like what we would call they were Catholic, but then branched off into other different types of, of religions like Lutheran or Methodist or Mormon. OK, so without getting into too much of that, that's what religious persecution means. OK, now. Because of this, much of the first American music wasn't really American because it came from the colonists' home country. You have to realize that they had so much going on, kind of like we're in crisis mode now. Imagine it back then where they had no resources. There was no grocery stores. They had a hunt for food. There was no shelters, no buildings. It was like they were starting over literally from scratch, okay? So... As a result of that, they just took the music that they knew and changed it up a bit. So a lot of times, as you can see down here, songs from their home countries um, were songs that they sang, but they changed the words to reflect their new experiences. 
Okay, so they took a song they might know, like Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, for example. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are, and changed it to represent what they were going through. So if we think about right now and COVID, 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 nasty virus. I don't know, but you get the idea. They changed the words that way, okay? So um, these ended up turning into a whole bunch of different types of songs. For example, ballads. Ballads are story songs um, and usually quite lengthy. There's a lot of different verses. Um, we have songs like sea shanties. Sea shanties tell sails of the sea and a lot of times helped the sailors work together and run the boat. Um, if you want to think of what a sea shanty might sound like, if you've ever watched the Disney movie, The Little Mermaid, and in the very beginning, the sailors are on the boat with Prince Eric and they sing, I'll tell you a tale of da, 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 right there. That's a sea shanty, okay? Um, and we also get other love songs and dance songs, of course. They use music just like we do now for entertainment and because it's something that they can relate to. The other thing you need to know is that a lot of classical and religious tunes were unchanged and brought over. So Europe at that time um, was like the cool spot for all of the popular composers and musicians to be. Okay, kind of like what we would say now is Nashville is a really popular spot for a lot of musicians. Um, back then, like the 1600s, Europe was where it was at. So they would bring over a lot of that classical music that they heard and a lot of the religious stuff that they would just sing in, in their churches back over in Europe. Okay. All right, let's see if we can move forward here. There we go. So what do we call all of this all of this music? Um, the good news is you've been doing this forever since you were in kindergarten with me. Um, it's called folk music, and we've been studying it. We just haven't been putting a title necessarily to it. And what you need to know is it's created by the common people. That means like you and me, the regular schmoes, okay? It's not something that we generally hear like these pop artists singing um, because it tells a story of what you and I are going through, okay? So um, you have to remember that. Now, could some popular artist take, a, take the song and make it sound really cool? Totally. And make it really popular? Absolutely. OK, um, folk music also gives a glimpse of what life was like at that period in time. OK, remember how I said it tells a story of what was happening. That's exactly what I'm saying here. It gives us an idea of what life was like at that time in history. It's passed down from generation to generation. Um, this is a story that I love sharing with you guys in person, but this is going to have to work. There's a song. Um, that my grandpa, bless his soul, he's passed away, he sh shared with me when I was little called the old gray mare. Now, first of all, what you need to know is generation to generation means like my grandpa and then my mom and then me and then my kids. That right there is four generations, right? So my grandpa sang this song to me and the song actually goes like this. Oh, the old gray mare, she ain't what she used to be, ain't what she used to be, ain't what she used to be. The old gray mare, she ain't what she used to be many long years ago. A gray mare is a horse, okay? She's not as good as what she used to be. She's tired. She's old. Well, my grandpa was pretty silly and liked to be ridiculous with us when we were little. So when I first learned the song, The Old Gray Mare, I learned it like this. The old gray mare, she in her underwear, in her underwear, in her underwear. The old gray mare, she in her underwear many long years ago. Okay, pretty ridiculous. Not the actual words, but it gives you an idea of the fact that my grandpa sang it to me, and that's how I learned the song. But it also makes a good point that I have here. Because it's passed down from generation to generation, usually by word of mouth, they're not written down many times, um, or at least they weren't to start, the words are sometimes changed, giving us a lot of different versions of the same song. So you could hear in the my example, the old grade mare, the, probably the original version talks about how she's just a tired out old horse. Um, but my grandpa 
was being silly and basically said she pooped in her underwear, right? Okay, kind of silly and fun. Um, other examples of folk songs that you might know are I've Been Working on the Railroad, Are You Sleeping, Yankee Doodle, and there's so many more, okay? Um, chances are, if you think it's like a little kid song, um, it, it's a folk song. Okay. The other thing is we've looked at these. For example, when we studied music of the Caribbean, four white horses on the river, that's a folk song from the Caribbean. So the only difference is right now we're looking at music, um, folk music from America. And it's like I said, it's great because it tells us a ton about the regular people that live in that area. Okay. So just think about that. Again, let's see if I can get this going here. All right, so here's a folk song that's rather popular. Um, it's called Simple Gifts. It's a shaker tune. Um, the shakers, if you remember from earlier, I said, were a re re religious group that came over and were created because they wanted religious freedom, okay? Um, and they lived a very simple, plain life. And the song represents that. Tis the gift to be simple, tis the gift to be free, tis the gift to calm down where you ought to be. And when you find yourself in the place just right, twill be in the valley of love and delight. When true simplicity is gained, to bow and to bend, we shan't be ashamed to turn turn will be our delight till by turning turning we come round right shakers got their name because they did like to dance now they couldn't do it too crazy but they like to um they like to dance and sing together to show their praise okay and it talks about how life should be simple because when you when you live that simple fun simple life, excuse me, you're going to find yourself in that right place. Okay. Which in this, in this case, they say is of love and delight or happiness. All right. Okay. So another song that I think is kind of silly, it doesn't have all of the verses that I know, but I'm going to share you this one. This one's an early folk song talking about a girl named Jenny Jenkins. Oh, will you wear red? Oh, my dear. Oh, my dear. Oh, will you wear red, Jenny Jenkins? Well, I won't wear red because it's the color of my head. I'll buy me a foldy rolly tilly totally seek a double roll, Jenny Jenkins roll. Now, I know I didn't sing the exact words here. It's because the version that I know is a little different. So verse two, again, she's trying to figure out what to wear, probably for a date. Oh, will you wear white? Oh, my dear. Oh, my dear. Oh, will you wear white, Jenny Jenkins? No, I won't wear white for the color's too bright. I'll buy me a foldy rolly till they told they seek a double roll, Jenny Jenkins roll. Will you wear blue? Oh, my dear. Oh, my dear. Oh, will you wear blue, Jenny Jenkins? No, I won't wear blue because blue won't do. I'll buy me a foldy rolly tilly dolly seek a double roll, Jenny Jenkins roll. Will you wear pink? Oh, my dear. Oh, my dear. Will you wear pink, Jenny Jenkins? No, I won't wear pink. I'd rather drink ink. I'll buy me a foldy rolly tilly totally seek a double roll, Jenny Jenkins roll. Will you wear green? Oh, my dear. Oh, my dear. Oh, will you wear green? Oh, Jenny Jenkins. No, I won't wear green. It's a color of a bean. I'll buy me a foldy rolly tilly totally seek a double roll. Jenny Jenkins roll. Will you wear rose? Oh, my dear. Oh, my dear. Oh, will you wear rose? Jenny Jenkins. No, I won't wear rose. It's the color of my nose. I'll buy me a foldy rolly tilly totally seek a double roll. Jenny Jenkins roll. Now, this verse isn't listed, but I want to share it with you because it's what makes the song fun. What will you wear? Oh, my dear. Oh, my dear. What will you wear? Jenny Jenkins. I have nothing to wear. I'll just have to go bare. I'll buy me a foldy rolly tilly totally seek a double roll. Jenny Jenkins roll. And right there's a great example of how um, an early song 
was just passed down from person to person and sometimes verses were added and changed. Um, for example, when I learned this song, Will You Wear Green? She says, I won't wear green. <laughs> It's a color, it's a, it's a sight to be seen. Like, ugh, it's hideous. Um, I've also seen versions with black in it as well. So that gives you an idea. Um, and it kind of gives you an idea because the music is rather simple. It's not overcomplicated. We're not seeing a ton of syncopation or anything like that in here, are we? No, we just have quarter notes and eighth notes, okay? Folk music generally is simple, not always. Okay, at least when we're talking about American folk music. All right, and my last thought for you today is your exit ticket. Um, I tried to keep this one a little bit simpler for you. Many of you did a really great job um, before spring break with coming up with syncopation. We'll take a little break from it. I don't wanna um, completely stop with it because I do wanna see some videos of you performing it. But this week, I want you to focus on we talked about folk music a ton. So in your Google Doc, give me three details you learned from the video. Okay, so you're going to tell me three points about folk music. Hint for you, pause my video on the folk music slide, and right there you're going to have tons of answers, okay? So again, I'll say it one more time. What is folk music? You're going to give me three things you learned about folk music. Not about early colonial music, but what is folk music? Pause the video on that slide to help you out. And then the second one is, it says, listen to the two folk songs below. Tell me which one is your favorite and why. So these are two silly songs that I learned when I was um, younger, obviously. And I thought they would be fun to share with you. They both show the lyrics. You can listen to the lyrics. But I want you to tell me in your Google Doc, which one did you like more and why? OK, um, I did approve the YouTube links, but if you have any issues seeing them, just send me an email and I'll help you out. All right. But I hope you learned a little bit about how music worked um, with the first colonist here. I'm excited because in the weeks to come, we'll start kind of seeing how music changes and grows and um, how we kind of get the music that we're listening to today. Until then, I hope that you guys are doing well and I miss you all and love you all. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.